when I was given a book in English called The Barelwis by Ihsan Ilahi Zahir. That book, and remember, advice to all young people, make reading a habit from a young age. Because later on you will find reading difficult. And in this day and age where people have smartphones now, and young people are always on smartphones, they tend not to read. They find reading difficult. If you will never read, and you will not be a reading public, then you will always remain under the grips of people who are deviated or who may even spiritually abuse you. Yes, if you are not a reading public. So many people today claim to follow Al Imam Ahmad Ridha Khan, but they never read his books. In fact, they will not be able to even mention a few titles of his works. But Alhamdulillah, in this regard I was objective because when the book was given, I read that book no less than four times, easily four times. In that book, they had references regarding the biography of Al Imam Ahmad Rida Khan. They had different claims made regarding him. Being an objective individual, I asked around regarding the fatawa of Imam Ahmad Rida Khan. Someone borrowed me at that time one volume of the fatawa, which I was unable to read. I was unable to read the fatawa because the fatawa obviously is written for scholars. But having this conviction that this fatawa could only be have been written by an alim before making judgments regarding this alim, a person should read his works. <clears throat> Years later, the same people who gave me that work, I approached them and brought the subject up with them. But at that point, there were references to works. And the author of that book even made a mockery of certain works which were ascribed to Al Imam Ahmad Rida Khan, like Jaddul Mumtar. He said, the, the Bredwis, they made fantastic claims regarding the works, written works of Al Imam Ahmad Rida Khan, works which he had not even written, like a commentary, a super commentary on the Hashi of Ibn Abidin, which is known as Jaddul Mutar. At that point, that book was not published. Now that book is published in seven volumes. Years later, the book was published, but the claims made in that work were that this book does not even exist. Now, around that time, some of the scholars in Pakistan, in Lahore, uh, namely Mufti Abdul Qayyum Hazabi, rahimahullah ta'ala, was working on a new edition of the Fatawa to simplify some of the uh, contents of the Fatawa because the Fatawa had passages from Farsi. You see how the Fatawa were written, the verdict was. Firstly, someone who speaks Urdu, there are levels of the, the, the qualification of speaking Urdu. If someone is from Lucknow, the Urdu will be, well, should be very good. Yes? Likewise, in different parts of India. People from India, the Urdu will be better than people from Pakistan. But within regions of Pakistan, there will be people who do not even speak Urdu or do not even understand Urdu in some cases. So the Urdu of Imam Ahmad Rida Khan ta'ala is a very difficult Urdu for someone who is not proficient in Urdu. The age which he lived in, which was, he was born after the 1850s, so the, uh, in the Victorian times. In that time, scholarship was on a decline but nevertheless, the level of scholarship then, compared to today, was very high. So, when, but when Al Imam Ahmad Rida Khan Rahmullah, wrote his fatawa, the fatawa were written mainly in Urdu, but he would place the quotes from the <coughs> Arabic works and Farsi works also. And this was left as it was. So when scholars would read that fatawa, 
any one of the fatwa, fatwa is plural of fatwa, whenever they would read that fatwa, they would be able to read, they were conversant in three languages, minimum. They knew Urdu, they knew Farsi, and they knew Arabic to a very good level. So, Mufti Abdul Qayyum Hazarwi, he simplified the fatwa and had the fatwa, the, some passages translated. So, that was not completed until after 2003. The full 30 volumes were not, not completed until 2003. So, up to 2003, I only had up to volume 16 or 17 maybe. But, an objective individual, what will they do? they will read the works for themselves. So, when I had read works regarding Nasiruddin al-Albani, the Salafi, uh, pseudo-Salafi scholar, or, Muhammad, uh, or Abdul Aziz bin Baz, their works, I also went and bought their works. So, if you went into my library, you will find the works of Muhammad Nasiruddin al-Albani, majority of his works I have, because at that time I was given a book, The Prophet's Prayer Described, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which was uh, translated by Usama Hassan. Now Usama Hassan now is the son of Suhaib Hassan. Now he's left the mainstream Salafism. He believes in evolution theory and a host of other things. They, because the pseudo-Salafi movement makes a person move towards secularism. They, extreme form of Sharia, the anthropomorphism, these were issues which I looked into later, but attaining the words of Nasiruddin al-Albani and reading them objectively and buying the works of Imam Ahmed al Khan and reading them objectively was something that any true student of knowledge will do. In Damascus, in Maktaba to Dar al-Bayruti, which is a famous um, in Halboni, in the area of Halboni, they, they had a bookshop which would have all, some of the Arabic works of Imam Ahmed al -Dakhar. So one of the first Arabic works I read was Imba'ul Hay, Bi Anna Kalamahu Al Masoon Tibyanu Li Kulli Shay, which was a book which Imam Ahmed al Dakhan wrote on showing that Al Quran al Kareem, the Quran, has knowledge of everything. A book available in Arabic. So this was the first true introduction to Al Imam Ahmed al Khan, rahimahullah. But then we return back to the works which he had written, like his fatawa, and we analyze our situation today. And also to those who do not follow or read the works of Al Imam Ahmed al Khan. We agree to the extent that no Muslim can form a new sect. Because the only saved group is ma ana alihi wa ashabi, which means what the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said, that which I am upon and my companions are upon, which is known as Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. The people of the prophetic way and the congregation. So if we are to observe today, who are the people of the prophetic way and the congregation? A person who is objective would have to study the works of the theologians, the people of Ilmul Kalam. So is it true, the first question, that Imam Ahmed Rita Khan rahimahullah, formed a new sect? Because this is a claim which people make that he formed a new sect. And what we observe today, this claim would say, meaning from multiple innovations of Sufi groups today, they would say that Al Imam Ahmed Rida Khan rahimahullah, is responsible for all these innovations. Even though in reality, deviated Sufism was something existent within India prior to Al Imam Ahmed Rida Khan. Prior to Al Imam Ahmed Rida Khan rahimahullah, there were many deviated Sufi groups. Otherwise, why would Ahmad Sir Hindi rahimahullah ta'ala have fought against such innovations? Why would have earlier scholars have fought against such innovations? And Imam Ahmad al-Dakhan rahimahullah included deviated Sufis 
amongst one of the deviated sects in his works. But when a person analyzes groups today, they would say, these are the followers of Imam Ahmad Rita Khan without resorting back to his works. Because the most many of them will know is his collection of poetry known as Hadaiqi Bakhshish. Most people just know Hadaiqi Bakhshish, meaning they read the poems and then they may even do commentary. Now recently there was a, a person who was the title Mufti who was commentating upon the Hadaki Bakhshish and he's regarding the verse of the Quran uh, regarding Qaba Qawseim which is regarding <coughs> the proximity of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa according to commentaries to Sayyiduna Jibreel alayhi wa but other commentaries have said this is regarding the divine vision Ru'ya this Mufti when commenting upon this uh, poetry he stands up in front of, a, of an audience and he says the commentary for this is that the closeness was such hmm. the way two people meet, meaning the way two human beings meet, and he hugged another person and said this is the meaning of the poetry. Now this, of course, does a great disservice to any scholar, a great disservice if people do not know the basics of Islamic creed theology, then they can never understand a scholar like Al Imam Ahmad Rida Khan. Of course, this is the result of blind faith, blind following in creed, which is impermissible. <coughs> blind following in, in creed and aqidah is impermissible. Mm. But so many people today will claim to follow Al Imam Ahmad Rida Khan, but they will not understand his works like Subhan al Sabuh. The work Subhana Subuh in volume 16 of Fatawa Ridawiya. The full name of the Fatawa is Al Ataya Nabawiya Fil Fatawa Ridawiya, which is the prophetic gifts in the Ridawi verdicts. This is the name of the Fatawa, and we know the way Al Imam Muhammad Khan Rahimullah would title the Fatawa was such that the title, the numerical value of the letters would add up to the year in which he wrote the book. So Subhan al subuh is a work which Al-Imam Ahmad Rida Khan ta'ala wrote on theology, one of his many works on theology, which was regarding the ascription of lying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a work, a work on theology. But the time he lived in was a time where he faced political challenges, theological challenges, and social challenges. These were the three main challenges in his time. Abu Hassan al Nadwi, Abu Hassan al Nadwi, his father was Abdul Hay, also. He wrote a book called Nuzat al Khawatir, which is a, a biography of Indian ulama. But his, his biographies of certain people are biased, like his biography of Al Imam Ahmad al Dakhan. He says regarding Al Imam Ahmad Rida Khan, Rafa Aliwa at Takfir, that he raised the, the flag of declaring other people disbelievers. This is a claim. So, so many Arab writers today, when they refer back to biography, the biography of Imam Ahmad Rida Khan, they refer back to Muzatul Khawatir and they find these biased uh, remarks regarding Al Imam Ahmad Rida Khan. The correct creed of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, the Ash'ari and the Maturidi schools is that the divine power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not connected to impossibility. Intrinsically not connected. Meaning, it is not a case that Allah can lie but chooses not to know. The divine power does not connect to lying. So this claim was made by Ismail al Dahlawi. And this is why Imam Ahmad Rida Khan wrote the work Subhan al Sabuh An Aidi Kid bin Makbuh that transcendent is the glorified one. Transcendent is the glorified one, meaning Allah. From what? From the fault of the, the 
bad attribute of what? Of lying. Mendacious attribute of lying. This attribute of lying, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is transcendent of that. Now one important thing to mention, not only for those who love Al-Imam Ahmad al Khan, those who are neutral towards Al-Imam Ahmad al Khan, and those who despise Al-Imam Ahmad al Khan, is to resort back to his works and read the books for yourself. Especially those who claim to follow him. What books does he have? In the Fatawa first, firstly the Fatawa currently is 30 volumes, but there are different editions. There is an early edition which was 12 chunky volumes. And there is a new edition, 22 volumes. And the Fatawa is being translated currently in its entirety into Arabic also. I think four volumes have been completed to date. But when you return back to his fatawa, you cannot say, and so many of our people think, that the works of Imam Ahmad Rida Khan are solely for the ulama, all of them are solely for the ulama. No. There are works which lay people can also read. But the problem is that we have kept, not me, but other people, they have kept their public at such a low level that they never encourage them to read. And if there is someone who, who becomes encouraged to read, they tell him these books you should not read, these are only books for the ulama. Even if they read the works of Imam Ahmad al they will say, do not read these works, these are works for the ulama. Some of them, they will have a following of murids, meaning students. They will send their own children to study. But when the child of one of the Murid's students decides to go and study, they will disencourage this, keeping the people ignorant. Why? Because when you keep them ignorant, they are easier to control. The more intelligent crowd you have, the more difficult the task of the scholar, meaning the scholar then has, would have to read himself, because the people will ask difficult questions. Yes? So, Reading is something that if our public does not go back to reading, then they will always be losing people to, to this tarnished image of Imam Ahmad Rida Khan rahimahullah ta'ala. The way people burnt the books of Imam Abu Hamid al-Ghazali, they burnt his books in Spain. Even recent, recently, after the, during the Syrian uh, revolution, they burnt the books of uh, Al Imam Muhammad Sayyid Ramadan al Buti, they're burning the books. These scholars are not affected because they are in the graves. A Sheikh Ramadan al Buti is buried next to Sultan Salahuddin al Ayyubi. He's, he's not affected by that. But as an obligation on us, do we not have an obligation to at least present the image of these ulama in the correct way? Absolutely. So the first step to this is by reading the works of these scholars ourselves. Now, so many people years ago would say the works of an Imam Ahmad Rida Khan are, are unavailable in English. Now we have those books in English. You, so many titles of an Imam Ahmad Rida Khan are available in English, published in Bolton, so published in your home city. How many of you sat down and read those works cover to cover? Likewise, those who are able to read Urdu, then read the works in Urdu, and those who are able to read in Arabic, read those works in Arabic. But the mentality needs to be changed. So, going back to the works of Imam Ahmad al Khan, meaning reading them, even, even so many people who claim to be followers of Imam Ahmad al Khan or scholars, they will be unfamiliar of his works, totally unfamiliar. Some of them would not be even able to recite the titles of his books. You know, the Al-Alama uh, Atah uh, Muhammad Bandiyalwi, Rahimullah said that if you want to tell if someone is learned, make them read the title of the books of Al-Imam Ahmad al Meaning because the, the titles, only a person who is conversant in classical Arabic would be able to make out what the title means. So going back to these words and reading them cover to cover, 
is the only way that these, these commemorations of Imam Ahmad Rida Khan will carry any meaning. 